Hi, my name is Calvin Henrion, and I'm about to explore the life of a rigger, a man who works his butt off day after day. Why am I taking this journey? I've been around the oil field my whole life. My father, relatives, and many people I grew up around work the rigs. All riggers have their own reasons for working the rigs. I'm on a mission to find out why these men do what they do. I'm taking a three hour trip from Brandon, Manitoba to a rig outside of Estevan, Saskatchewan, where we'll take a first hand look at a typical shift on a rig. The oil boom has affected everyone across the prairies and over the last few years, southwestern Manitoba's oil field has grown substantially. This has created employment opportunities for many people. One of those is working on the drilling rigs. The people who choose this way of life sign on for hard physical labor, shift work, harsh weather conditions, all while attempting to have a life outside of the rigs. Some do it because they need the money, some have followed in their family's footsteps, others just love the work. Many people think of them as rig pigs, but I think they're some of the hardest working individuals on the prairies. Before we get to the rig, we are making a stop in the town of Verdon, the oil capital of Manitoba, to talk to Mayor Jeff McConnell. The oil boom hasn't only affected those who are employed because of it, but also the residents of towns and rural areas that surround the industry. I think most people know that we identify as the oil capital of Manitoba and have done so since the early 50s when oil was first discovered, but when one looks at oil in the history of Mount and Verdon and the people it brings to our community, what it did do uh, early on was it set up a bunch of different services, like the, the service sector within our downtown region is quite significant as well, in that if you take a look around, we've got everything you could possibly ever need. What happened recently though was that in the late 2000s, uh, mid to late 2000s, the methods of extracting the oil from the ground in southwest Manitoba and North Dakota and Saskatchewan changed. And changed so dramatically that the industry grew rapidly, um, as well as at the same time, that's when the, the price jumped. Those dollars and or that price and the, the extraction method combined have, have just grown the industry exponentially around here. I've just arrived at Ken Elson Drilling Company's Rig 11. The daylight crew has already been here for a few hours and the afternoon crew will be arriving later to start their 3 to 11 shift. Before I head onto the rig, I'm going to talk to the tool push to go over a few safety details to prepare for some dangers we could face today. Well, I'm Bryce McMahon at Can Allison 11. We just nicely got started drilling this well, drilled out this morning. Uh, pretty good day, it's a little cold out, there'll be some ice build up, watch your slips, some high pressure lines to avoid. Take care of the equipment, some steam. Other than that, we should be good to go. After I'm all geared up, it's time to go out to the rig and meet the crew. The driller is the man in charge of the crew. He keeps track of all the drill info, including pressures, drill bit depth, circulations and more. He also runs rig controls to connect new pipes to allow deeper drilling. The derrick hand doesn't have the highest ranking position on the rig, but he works up higher than everyone else. When the pipes come out of the ground, he climbs up the derrick and pulls the pipe into the raft. The motor hand makes sure everything is well maintained and in working order. He's also the loader operator 
moving supplies and keeping racks stocked with drill pipe. The Roughnecks, and there are always two, work the tongs to help the driller make a connection. The tongs are like big vice grips that tighten and loosen the pipe. Roughnecks also clean and service the rig. Today, the crew is drilling a fast hole. This is where the drill bit moves continuously, reaching greater depths quickly. The Roughnecks stay pretty busy, making a connection every 10 to 15 minutes. There's also a special guest joining us on our ship today. Veteran rigger Ronald Henryon, my dad, is here to make my childhood dream of seeing my dad at work come true. I started in the late 80s, started working as a green roughneck. The only reason I started working rigs because I wasn't doing very good in high school and of course my brother was working rigs before and I knew what kind of money he was working, I mean making, so that's what I, how I started working rigs. I've spent my life looking up to this man because of all the hard work he's done to support our family. To follow in my father's footsteps, I worked rigs for a short time, briefly joining the third generation of rig hands in our family. But having the chance to see my dad in action will be a moment I'll treasure forever. Dad and I, we, we, never, got, we never got to do a lot of activities together as I grew up through my childhood and even through my teen years uh, because he was working a lot. and. We just didn't have time to spend together between either him working and, and gone all the time and, and uh, or tired or sleeping to when I was in high school and I started becoming busy myself and we just didn't have any time to spend together at all. Because of his job, my dad and I missed out on a lot of father-son activities through my childhood. But today we are joining the crew and we'll have the chance to perform a connection together. After sharing a great moment, Dad is heading home to relax and spend some time with the family during his week off. The crew has almost completed its daylight shift. They have completed all their tasks without any problems in the frigid temperatures. Once the relief crew has shown up, our crew can start heading home. I'm on my way to Redvers, my hometown, where I'll spend more time with my dad and my family. It's an hour and a half commute which isn't uncommon for many rig hands. But the driving time takes a toll on the rig worker. The crew doesn't get to decide where the rigs are located, so when it moves, the crew must follow, whether it's minutes or hours away. I'm finally home, and it's late in the afternoon. Mum has supper on the go, and Dad and I are ready to eat. With Dad working, our family doesn't have many chances to share a meal. When we do spend time at the table together, we are always trying to make it an occasion. And with Mum's delicious food, it makes the occasion just that much better. After the meal, Dad tells me, for the first time, what he finds rewarding about life on the rigs. I got a good crew. You know, if you have a good crew and you got three other crews in there and everybody gets along, Especially when everybody has a good communication, that's the main part of the all work on the rig. If you got safety and good communication with your guys on the crew or any other crews, everything works good on the rig. If you got that, the rig is going to work 100%. It's been an interesting few days being back on the rigs. On my journey, I've confirmed what I've always thought. Rig hands do work hard. Whether or not the workers have other people in their lives, they adopt their crew as their family. Everybody works together, communicating, and doing their best to make sure everything gets done correctly and safely. My dad inspired me to make this documentary because I have always wondered why he continues to work rigs, especially after the life-threatening accident he had when he was younger. I found that he stays working rigs because it is all he knows, and he'll do whatever it takes to support his family.
I got to put money to put Just away for my kids. That's the main thing is put money for my kids through school, university, and it's for my wife so we can put some money so we could retire and go on some big trips somewhere. <laughs> Rig work is a rough life, a tough life, but one that should command respect. Whether we like it or not, much of what we're able to do in our daily lives depends on oil. And without the dare cans and the tool pushes, and all the others who show up every day to do the dirty work, that precious commodity would never get out of the ground. Our modern society owes a lot to those who choose to spend their life on their rigs.